Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and welcome back. Uh, we had started a discussion on ergonomic assessment tools, and we were specifically discussing the tools for evaluating work posture. So we were on topic one dash two work posture. In the last segment, we discussed uh, OVAS, that is a time-driven postural assessment tool. In this segment, we are going to discuss a rapid upper limb assessment, a RULA for short, and this is an event-driven postural assessment tool. So as the name implies, rapid upper limb assessment, which is generally used to assess postures where predominantly upper part of the body is being used. This one, that poor design of the jobs and work workstations actually, is the main cause of poor work postures. So we discussed in the last segment that postural assessment methods are subjectives. Subjective methods are objective. We are focusing more on objective methods. And we discussed OVAS and now we are going to discuss. Rula focuses on uh, three things, the posture, the force that is involved during that task, and movement. A uh, major focus is on posture and then posture is further uh, divided into two categories, A and B, and their score is combined to get uh, a final score uh, by, by adding the score for force and movement. In OVAS, we had uh, four action categories in RULA, we do have again four action levels or action categories. The score that we get uh, using RULA method can range from one to seven, and this score of one to seven can further be converted into one of the four action categories. And like OVAS, these are four uh, ordinal categories. So we have seen this that posture, force, and movement, three things are uh, evaluated using RULA. So this tool, RULA is specific to seated workers, seated tasks, or standing tasks where there is no movement involved. So where upper body is uh, predominantly being used. So main applications are of, uh, of RULA are to assess the musculoskeletal risk, part of ergonomic investigation, compare the design of two workstations, evaluate outcomes such as productivity or suitability of equipment. So you can compare which equipment is more suitable, uh, more productive using this method. And this can be used as a training tool as well because it, it discusses indirectly what is the best posture and what is a bad posture. Which body parts are the focus of RULA? It focuses on neck, trunk, upper arm, forearm and hand. So as you saw in the case of was that it focused on, on the trunk, arms and legs. So this method is more focused, is more detailed and also includes other body parts like neck and uh, forearm and upper arm separately and hand as well. So there are three steps involved in using RULA method. First, the posture is selected, that is to be evaluated. In second step, the postures are scored using scoring sheet. And finally, these postures are converted into one of the four action levels. So which posture to assess? So simple rule of thumb is that you should go for the longest held posture or the worst posture. The posture that is held for the most, uh, for the most of the time during a job day or that is most problematic posture can be selected.
Now it is possible if a right and left body part, that is right and left arm are doing significantly different tasks, then you have to score left and right part separately. Otherwise you can, you can score either of these two if they are performing the similar actions. So you can use software as well as pen and paper uh, to assess posture using ruler method. So posture, force loads and muscle use and movement are considered. So we further classify the body parts into two categories, group A and B and, and, and score them separately. So in group A, we have upper arm, lower arm, and wrist, and wrist further has two scores, uh, wrist bending and wrist twist. I forgot to mention legs uh, when we discussed the body parts that are the focus of Rula. So legs are also included. So in, in part B, we have uh, neck, trunk, and legs. So we score these, um, these parts, upper arm, lower arm, and wrist to get a score A. We score neck, trunk, and legs to get a score B. We add muscle and force score in these scores A and B to get scores C and D respectively. And finally, we, we get the grand score and convert this grand score into one of the four action levels. So we will see what are those four action levels. So first, how to calculate score A. So basic definition uh, that applies is the definition of neutral posture. So for upper arm, this is the neutral posture. So any deviation from this neutral posture on the back or on the front is the deviation, of, uh, of course, from the neutral posture and we will be assigning higher scores. So the farther we move from the neutral posture, higher will be the score. Similarly, for the lower arm, so the upper uh, figure also is showing the neutral posture for the lower arm. So that is the neutral posture. So as the lower arm deviates from neutral posture, you can see here, the, uh, the worse is the posture and a higher score is assigned. So you can see this is the zero to 60 degree angle. This is 60 to 100 and this is above 100. Similarly for wrist bending, zero degree is the neutral posture, 15 degree to either side of this neutral will uh, result in a higher score and above 15 degree will result in even higher score. So this is 15 degree. So the figure is showing uh, greater than 15 degree. Same, same is about wrist twist. So if the wrist is in the handshake position, that is the neutral posture. And if it's twisting, that is the deviation from neutral posture and we will assign some score. So that is the basic idea. Now we'll see these scores in detail. So this is the neutral posture, this one for the upper arm. So if it, it moves 20 degree, to either sides, the score will be score will be score will be one. So neutral posture up to 20 degree will result in a score of one. If it is moving in the backward direction or greater than 20 degree, so we will have a score of two. If the movement is beyond this 20 degree in the forward direction, so from 20 to 45 degree. Uh, the score will again be 2. If it is beyond this 45 degree, yeah, just like shown in this figure, the score will be 3. And uh, if it is beyond this uh, angle of 90 degree, 90 degree plus, so score will be 4. So you can see that all these movements are taking place in, in which plane? So these movements are taking place in, in medial plane. So we are talking about medial plane at this point.
So apart from any of these uh, four, uh, in fact, five possibilities, if the shoulder is raised as well, so we will add one to the score. And if upper arm is abducted as well, that is upper arm is moving away from the body, we will add one. And we will subtract one if the person is leaning or sporting the weight of the arm. The maximum score that we can have for the upper arm is four from here. Maximum can be four plus two from here. So maximum score for upper arm can be six. Similarly, the neutral uh, posture for the lower arm is again the straight posture. So this angle is 60. So the shaded area shown is from 60 to 100. So this is 60 and up to this is, this one is 100. So if, if this, this angle of the lower arm is from 60 to 100, score will be one. If it is from zero to 60, score will be two. And this is a food for thought for you as well, that for a greater angle, we are having a lower score angle we are having a higher score so what could be the possible reason for that so we will discuss it uh, if you ask and if this angle is uh, greater than 100 uh, that is beyond this position 100 plus we will again have a score of 2 and we will add 1 if working across the midline of the body. So if there is some angle that, uh, that the lower arm is making with the medial plane, then we will add one. So you can see this, this thing. Then we have wrist. So this is the neutral posture for the wrist. So zero degree angle with the, with the lower arm so this is wrist this is lower arm if the wrist is bending so uh, from neutral posture up to 15 degrees on either side the score will be 2 and if it is bending or flexing beyond 15 degree the score will be 3 and if it is extending beyond 15 degrees, that is hyperextension, the score will be four. Right. So in, in addition, uh, the score will be three, sorry. In, in both cases, flexion beyond 15 degrees and extension beyond 15 degrees, in both cases, the score will be three. And if the wrist is bending away from the midline as well. So that was, uh, that was the bending in, in a different plane. This figure that, uh, that is showing the uh, bending in up and down direction, flexion and extension, but this is away from the midline. So in this case, you will add one. So for wrist, we can have a maximum score of uh, three from here and one from, one from here. So maximum score can be four. Wrist twist, so if the wrist is in the handshake position, the score will be one. Just handshake position, neutral posture. And if it is twisting, whatever is the angle of twist, the score will be two. So there are two scores for wrist, wrist bending and wrist twisting. And if there is no resistance during the task, no force or up to two kilogram, the score for the forces will be zero. For two to 10 kg load or force score will be one. For two to 10 kg static load or two to 10 kg repeated loads or forces or 10 kg or more intermittent loads, the score will be two. And for 10 kg static load, in fact, uh, greater than 10 kg or uh, greater than 10 kg repeated load, the score will be three. We will discuss what these values mean during question and answer session, but you have to add the score as well. Then we have muscle use score. 
So whatever score you have got so far, you will add one. If the task is static and uh, that posture is held for longer than 10 minutes or that task is repeated more than four times. So they are just opposite. This is for static posture and this is for highly repetitive posture. So you will add one if, if any of these situation holds. So we have discussed score A, score B is very similar. So neutral posture of neck is just straight and as we bend the neck, that is a deviation of uh, the neck from the neutral posture. So we will assign a higher score. So neck have two scores, the bending in the, uh, in the, in the medial plane and twisting in the, in the transverse plane and side bending in the, in the frontal plane. So actually neck has three scores. So uh, scores in the medial plane, in the transfer plane and in the, in the frontal plane. Forward bending, twisting, and side bending. Now, trunk also has similarly three scores in, in the medial plane, in the transverse plane, and in the frontal plane. So, forward bending in these cases, uh, twisting, and side bending. And then there is score for, for legs as well. So, neck with respect to medial plane, if it is in the neutral posture, that is zero to 10 degrees score will be one. It is forward flexing, forward bending or flexing from 10 to 20 degrees score will be two. Uh, flexing greater than 20 degrees score will be three. And in extension, so this was the neutral posture. So whatever is the value of an extension score will be four. Because ex extension in this case, actually hyper extension is a unnatural movement. So it is more risky, so score is high. So these are the movements of neck in the medial plane, then neck twist in the transverse plane. So we will add one if there is twisting of the neck, whatever is the angle of twist in the transverse plane. And for neck side bending, that is in the, in the frontal plane. So if there is no side bending, uh, there will be no added uh, score, but if the neck is side bending, we will add one. So neck can also have a maximum score of, of six. Four for movement in medial plane, maximum four, one for twisting and one for side bending. So maximum score can be six. The same concept applies to the trunk. Neutral posture score of one, flexion of 20 degrees score of two, flexion of 20 to 60 degrees score of three, and flexion greater than 60 degree score of four, and uh, these movements are in the medial plane again and you can see that there is no hyper extension of trunk possible so there is no score for hyper extension twisting in the transfer plane if, if it is there you will add one and if there is side bending in the frontal plane you will add one so trunk can also have a maximum score of six four for flexion in the medial plane, one for twisting and one for side bending. So maximum score can be six. So if, if the posture is stable, the feet are well supported on both legs, you will add one. If legs and feet are not evenly balanced, you will add two. So force and load scores are having the same classification as we discussed. So I won't repeat it again. And muscle use score has also same categorizations, two possibilities, one for static posture and one for repetitive posture. So you will add one if uh, one of these conditions holds. And whatever score we get, we can convert it, to, convert it into action categories. So in ruler, we can have a score of one to seven. If score is one or two, that is action category or action level one. So not such a dangerous posture, a score is three to four, that is action level four. So changes may be required for score five or six, that is action level three. Changes are required soon. And for score of seven, action level four and changes are required immediately. So it is recommended to use a camera to make uh, pictures or videos of the person because you have to mark so many angles. So the pictures, 
and videos will will help you to to measure the angles accurately and make sure to avoid parallax error as well so the question is how we can use the ruler method the answer is we can use uh, different software that are available or we can use uh, assessment sheets like uh, this one uh, this is uh, nicely designed by ergonomics plus so you can see there are uh, pictures of different body parts that are assessed in the ruler method with the angles that are very clearly indicated so using the procedure that we have discussed so far uh, we can use these uh, three tables to to get the ruler score for example if the score for the upper arm is three and the score for lower arm is for example two and the risk score is three and the risk to score is for example one so we will get a score of four uh, from this table a so that is actually our posture score a and then we can add the uh, and the muscle use score and force or load score to get the wrist and arm score. So we will add something here if it is applicable uh, to the score of four in this case to get the wrist and arm score. Similarly, using this table B, we can use the neck score. We can use the score for the, for the trunk and the legs to get a score from here. So we call it posture B score, we can add the muscle U score and force or load score to this uh, score B to, to get the neck, trunk and leg score. And then we can use this table C to find the grand score. So for example, this wrist and arm score eventually turned out to be five and this score turned out to be this uh, trunk, uh, uh, neck, trunk and leg score turned out to be, for example, seven or greater than seven. So our grand scores or the ruler score turns out to be seven. So that is actually action category four because seven is investigate and implement change. So that is action category four. So you can design your own sheet in the Excel. You can use uh, the sheets like these that have been designed by, uh, by some organizations or the universities, or you can use some software to, to score postures are using the ruler.